and welcome back to my podcast, this very new thing that I've got my teeth well and truly stuck into now. I would just like to start off by saying, I have some good news. The clocks have gone forward. So that means that our lockdown is one hour shorter than what it could have been. Coming up on today's episode, I'm going to be speaking to another friend of mine. She is involved in the local amateur dramatics um, scene and we're going to be talking to her about how the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic has affected her and her plans that she had for the future with up and coming shows and also her production company which she had just set up and how that has been put on hold until all this is over. Now the arts have been heavily affected with the coronavirus outbreak, leaving many actors and also people employed within the entertainment industry out of work, many self-employed people. So today I want to focus mainly on the arts because the arts are very important, not just for young people but for, for everybody really. And let's face it, we all love to be entertained and there's no better way to be entertained than going to a theatre and seeing a live show in front of your eyes. Never mind your reality TV and your Saturday night things. Live theatre, that is where it is. And it's vital that we support the arts, and it's vital that it keeps on going. Because without it, life will be pretty boring, let's be honest. Now, one area of the entertainment world that has been affected so far by this pandemic is the amateur dramatics sector. Across the country, there are possibly hundreds of societies, local societies that have had shows planned and are in rehearsals for shows and they've had to be cancelled or postponed till a later date because of what is happening currently. Now, these are people who do performance for the love and joy of actually getting on stage and performing for people. Now, theatres were one of the places to be affected quite early on in this pandemic. So, of course, that started to affect a lot of people and a lot of groups. Personally speaking, the theatre where I work, we have lost quite a few productions which were scheduled to be on in the coming months. And also, we have lost some productions which were scheduled for later on in the year, simply because the people doing the shows are not able to rehearse. But with all this going on, it is still great to see people doing what they can to entertain the nation. I mentioned in one of my earlier podcasts about how much I was impressed with social media and how people, actors, singers, have got on board and used social media to continue their passion and their thing. And every day I go through Facebook and there's loads of people doing songs and covers and you know what? It is so refreshing to see When all the doom and gloom is going on in the world and you can just listen to someone belting out a wonderful song or listen to someone, it's uplifting. It puts a smile back on your face. And that is the power of social media, the fact that that can be done. People are still able to perform and to do what they do best and what they love to do. So without further ado, let's welcome Hannah to the conversation. So, hello, Hannah. How are you doing? Hello. I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm not so bad, thank you. How is um, life in lockdown for you? It's a bit bizarre, to be quite honest. Um, I'm quite used to being out and about and never at home. And now I am at home rather a lot, which is very, very strange. Normally my evenings are taken up with rehearsals and then my weekends are taken up with show things or seeing shows or being at other rehearsals and things it's yeah it's all a bit strange it's very crazy isn't it it's very crazy just suddenly Mm. going from being really busy to kind of having so much time where you think right well i've got a long list of things to do but i need to spread them out so i don't run out of things to do and end up sat around doing nothing that's the one so hannah my podcast for today is touching on the amateur dramatics uh, scene and how that has been affected with the current situation. So you are heavily involved in the local amateur dramatics scene. So how about, take a bit of time, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you get up to in your spare time. Okay, okay. So my spare time is taken up in various ways, but all theatre-based really. 
So I'm chairman of a local amateur dramatic society. I've been doing that for nine years now. So it's kind of, it's one of those things where it's quite ingrained. Um, I've been a member of that society for 20 years. So that's kind of the, the main thing. And then I'm also involved with other societies. So that one's in Bolton. I'm involved over at Blackburn, over at Blackpool, over in Adlington, near Chorley. So yeah, kind of a few different places, but all fairly similar things. So I direct shows, I'm in shows, I stage manage shows, I do lighting for shows. Wow. So, so you're, yeah, you're kind of, of like international and a woman of many talents. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So as well as being involved, heavily involved in local uh, theatre, you have recently set up your own production company. I have, yes. A friend and I decided to go into business with each other. And at the moment we have, it's, it's a one-man show that we have doing the rounds about uh, Dave Allen, which has gone really well. We've done it a couple of places so far. Um, although we were meant to be doing it in Manchester. Um, two weeks ago for the Irish Festival mm. and unfortunately we had to pull it the day before it went up because just with everything that was going on and yeah. the lack of people going to shows and, and just for, for audience safety more than anything mm. it was going to be in an upstairs room of a pub so in very close quarters and given everything that was going on we just didn't feel it was it was right to put it on. So you have just set up a brand new business, a production company. Uh, you are in the art sector. How has this lockdown and this uh, pandemic affected you so far? At the moment, because of where we are in kind of the setup of it all, and with it being quite quite new, really, it's not had a massive effect for us. Um, obviously, it's been it's not great when you have to cancel a show at all. Um, but thankfully, we've not really got anything concrete booked in for the rest of the year. You know, we'd got lots of plans and we'd got kind of uh, things penciled in for, for kind of the end of summer mm. and autumn and what have you. But at the moment, they're all on hold. So it's not been a huge blow, but it has, it, given that we don't really know where everything's going to be for the next five, six, seven of months, course. it may have a knock on further down the line. Mm. But hopefully it's something that when all this is over, you can kind of pick up the pe you know, pick up where you left off as such and kind of carry on. And, and hopefully it, it hasn't been that much affected. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I mean, thankfully, it, it's not been financially dreadful that we've had to, to cancel this one. It's not like we'd had um, lots of, of kind of money going out to various places mm. and we've lost deposits and things. So thankfully it's not been that bad. I do know far too many people in the industry who were really struggling on that sense um, and have lost thousands and thousands of pounds on, on various gigs that they now can't do. So, yeah, thankfully we're in a better position. So, Hannah, you, you know, you, you are currently involved with um, shows and things. How, how many shows have been affected so far that you have been involved in? Quite a few, actually. So one particularly immediately affected was the, the one that I was directing um, that was meant to be on a couple of weeks ago. So we'd, we'd done the tech on the Sunday and it was quite a, a, a bitty tech. So we didn't really run the full show. So come to the Monday night and we were all raring to go and we'd finished off the last bit of scenery and everybody's coming and, and starting to get ready and what have you. And then Boris makes the announcement that everybody should avoid theatres. Um, so that was quite a blow, really. Mm. I mean, we'd been careful up to then to to make sure that we were doing the best we could with kind of people not being on top of each other and, and making provisions for our audience and mm. our cast and, and proving to be safe. But yeah, it was it was quite a blow on Monday, Monday last. And again, it was it, the way it was done. It was it wasn't like you should all close. It was the public should avoid the, these places. So it left everybody yeah. in limbo of, of, of what, what, what do we do? You know, we, we can't we can't stay open because nobody's going to come and we can't close because we've not been told to as such. So it was a bit, nobody, be it people who run theatres and, and, and things or, or actual performers, nobody knew what the right thing to do was. I think that was the most difficult bit um, because obviously kind of I and the, a few from the committee stood there and went, we can't put this show on. Mm. He specifically said avoid theatres. But mm. on the other hand, our insurance would only cover us if a third party reason meant that we couldn't do the show. So it, yes. we were in limbo for a good little while. And then we made the call to close the show. 
Um, and a, a friend of mine who works in the industry was like, well, if, if big theatres are still open, then you could have done it. Yeah. But within half an hour, the entire West End and regional theatres are closed as well. So thankfully, we kind of knew we'd make the right call. It's that impact that you staying open also has on everybody else because if you're not careful, it can be seen to, to you not being um, um, careful as such or you, you, you're you not, you know, you're being irresponsible for a word by that's it, that's by, by, by staying open. Yeah, either we as a, as a society or, or like yourself in the, the industry in a proper theatre, and we, we have a duty of care to both our cast and our audience, don't we, and our crew and what have you. So it's, of it's making the right call. Not that it's going to be an easy one. No, it, it isn't an, an easy one at all. And it, it's quite heartbreaking, really, because you you rehearse for for months in advance and everybody involved works to this this one point this this opening night and then doing the show for all these people and it must feel heartbreaking to be told or you get to that that point and it's suddenly ripped away from you absolutely i mean we rehearse for six months for this show and we rehearse twice a week so we don't go overboard but we it's a long time to mm. be rehearsing a show and i mean we do five nights normally but this year we've not done a single one. And mm. it, it's such, such a shame for everybody that's been involved with it. All the guys who've worked on the sort of the set out and getting the scenery and the, the costumes and things. But everybody else who's spent their time learning lines mm. and, and making sure they've got the, the movements in the head. It really is such a shame all around. It is. And if if you look at in terms of the professional side of things, where it's, it's, it's people's jobs, people also on the amateur side are also heavily affected because they're all the same jobs. Uh, you know, there isn't there isn't a wage or, or, or anything there, but it's still it's time, it's effort, it's input, it's people's passion, it's people's thoughts and ideas. And so it's still affected equally as much as what it is if it's someone's job. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it, it's weird because you yourself probably know that the post-show blues is a real thing. Mm, yeah. So after a show, it's very easy to kind of feel cut off from everything and, and that you've lost a part of yourself because your show's finished. But this has kind of been like post-show blues without the show. So you've not had the big up first. You've just had the big down, yeah. which is, is really strange. I know yeah. quite a few friends of mine who are involved in shows have really been affected by it. Mm. And, and it's really hit them hard when they walked in because there were other shows on the same week and since then who've obviously had to cancel and they walked into a theatre and were told, no, get out, you can't cause stay. It is. I mean, I mean, personally, personally speaking, um, the theatre where I work, we currently still have the set on stage, which was for the production that should have been on that week. So, you know, right, yeah. go, going in every other day or you know, when I can't check on things and you walk in and you gr you're greeted with that set and it's a, it's a kind of, it's a reminder of, of what should have been as such and it's a bit, yeah. it, it is. It, it's, it's, it's a it's, kick in the teeth, isn't it? It is a bit, it is a bit because like, you know, like I say, people work very hard to make, th make these sh shows happen and when it's suddenly ripped away from underneath your feet, it's a bit of, well, what can we do now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been involved in, in other shows as well. I've had quite a few shows on this the beginning of this year, some of which are yet to go on. And actually now probably won't go on at all. Mm. Um, so I was meant to be lighting uh, a kid's Bugsy Malone up mm. in Blackpool this next week, I think it was, this weekend, this week coming. Um, and theirs isn't going on. They may well do theirs later, but because they're part of a theatre school, they're going to be getting back into a new... Of course, um, season and a new a new batch of children. Yeah. So whether they'll be able to do that or not, I don't know. One of the other societies I'm, I'm involved in, they were meant to be doing theirs in May, and they've had to postpone theirs for twelve months now, just because there's no way they could get it back up and running in time sooner later this year. So how do you think this is going to have an impact in the future when all this is over and things return back to normal? Do you think it's a case of we just carry on from where we left off? Or do you think there's going to be a little bit of a lull where it's going to take a little bit of time for people to start getting back into going to see shows and supporting theatre because of the break as such that they've had financially m more than anything? People will be concentrating more on getting themselves back on the feet more than they are uh, going to the theatre. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite a difficult one and it, it's going to take a while to get back to how it was, I think, certainly. 
Um, so like you say, financially, people, it's going to be tight for a lot of people over the next few months because obviously if they've, been, if they've had to finish work or they've been doing shorter hours or whatever it is or the, the kids have been at home so they couldn't mm. go to work, it, it's really going to be a struggle for an awful lot of people. Um, so yeah, I think inevitably things like theatre are going to be at the bottom of people's lists for their extra money that they've got at the end of it all. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I remember when the recession hit and, um, you know, going to see a show, going to a theatre, it is, it's a luxury. It's it's a treat and it really is, it's at the bottom of people's lists when it comes to putting food on the table. It's only when they've got a, a spare bit of cash where they go, oh, well, we'll go and see a show or, you know, whatever. And it, it is, and it's, it's such a shame that, you know, we are at the bottom of the pile as such, but I do mm-hmm. think over time it will get better and, you know, we as a society, we, we, we can survive most things and I think we can we can survive this. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. And I think there are so many people who are, A, so heavily involved in theatre anyway, but B, so appreciative, apparently, appreciative, <laughs> whichever word, that word, um, um, of the arts, that actually it will go back to flourishing and Mm. people will go back it might take a little while but i think it will find its way and it it will be back to where it was just how long that will take is yet to be seen exactly but you know people still can support theater even though they're closed like if you have had tickets booked for a show rather than ring and say can i have a refund or you know if they ring and say would you like a refund you know say well actually no maybe put it back into the charity fund into the collection funds put it back into the theatre or the society. That does help. Um, I I had tickets to go and see a show in in Blackpool. Um, I got a phone call the other day saying it had been cancelled. Would I like a refund or a credit note? And I just said, no, it's fine. Put it into whatever fund you would would put a donation in. Put it into that. Because I think it's it's important that even though theatres are closed we can still support theatres now just by doing that. Times have become very hard for a lot of people and very quickly, but you was going to spend it anyway. It's already left your account, so to speak. So why not just keep it in the good cause that it was intended for in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. And I must say, the generosity of people has been absolutely overwhelming. It genuinely has. Mm. So we've, like you say, people who were meant to be coming to our show who either paid for the tickets or said they were coming and, and haven't paid for the tickets. In fact, I got a check the other day from one of our audience who was meant to be coming and was going to pay, pay on the door and obviously didn't have the opportunity to, but they were like, no, I'm going to send you the money for it. And our ticket secretary has said that the amount of people who have all turned around and said, no, keep it, it's fine. It was it was meant for you, so you may as well keep it and use Ex- it. Exactly, and, exactly. Yeah, and, it, and it, even our really advertisers good. and things, and our or- I mean, our orchestra, a lot of them have waived their fee. Our um, Even like professional companies like the Costumiers have said the future, they would drop their fee for the next thing that we do. The backcloth guys have said we can have the same cloth for carriage charges. And it's all those little things made yes. up, and it yeah. really has shown kind of the good in people. Of course, I think. of course, and it shows people. It do, it will. It shows just how much people love theatre and how how much people yeah. appreciate it because they are willing to do that. Yeah, definitely. So, Hannah, just one more quick little uh, question as such. I've suddenly become a massive fan of social media. Uh, I've, I've, I've always been one who kind of has a little look on Facebook every now and then and stuff, but currently I find it is ruling my day purely because I go onto Facebook and there's hundreds of people performing and doing songs, doing little excerpts or, you know, whatever it might be. They're doing their thing as such. Do you enjoy this as much as I do? Do you know, I really am enjoying it, actually, at the minute. It's been weird, because, like yourself, I don't get time to sit and troll through mm. Facebook most of the time. Um, but it's been great. I mean, some friends of mine have been putting on little songs. They've been doing little comedy songs. Mm. Friends have been sharing um, parodies of things, often quarantine-related parodies. Yes. But actually, some of them are really, really good. They are good, and it it puts a smile on your face when when you because exactly. you, you can see someone's put a lot of time and effort into doing this little remake of a song, 
and you think that is really good that's put a smile on my face and it's really made light of a very bad situation yes definitely we all need that don't we exactly because laughter is the best medicine indeed so have you got anything you would like to add to my little podcast what about some plugs I don't think for so. future I shows may, maybe <laughs> Well, the thing is, plugs for future shows is a bit all up in the air at the minute. Well, isn't that's it. it. it nobody is, knows it is. when anything's going to be yeah, on. <laughs> true. That's it. It's like, how do you advertise something where you, you, you don't know, know when it's going to be on? No, it's not. It's very, very true. <laughs> so, yeah, come and watch everything I'm doing. I just can't tell you when that's it's on. That's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, come and watch it all, but we don't know when it's going to be. But look out because it will be on soon. Well, Hannah, thank you very much for joining in my little effort of a podcast. It's been wonderful talking to you. Great talking to you. Thanks, Chris. And I'm really enjoying listening to them as well, so well done. Thank you very much. Hopefully, the more people I can get, you know, hopefully try and grow it a little bit and see see where it, where it goes. Absolutely. So, Hannah, again, wish you all the best for your lockdown and wish you all the best for future shows. And I'm sure we shall be reunited very soon and we can possibly have a couple of glasses of wine to uh, have a good catch-up. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Stay safe. Speak to you soon. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you very much, Hannah, for your input there. It was really nice to talk to you and and have a conversation about just how this situation is affecting our theatres and our our local groups of, of, of amateur dramatic people. Well, I'm going to sign off and go and make myself a nice cup of tea, I think. Thank you all for listening. Keep sharing, keep liking, comment away. As I said in yesterday's podcast, if there's anything you would like me to talk about or say, or if you have something you want to get out there, I don't know. I don't, I'm, st- like, I'm still new to this, so I don't quite know fully how it works. But get in touch with me and let's see what we can do. I do have a few more people lined up to get involved in this podcast, so listen out for those. Stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled for my little name popping up on your news feed and make sure you do click to listen. So thanks again to Hannah for joining me on today's podcast and also a big thank you to everybody who listens to this. This is my perfect way of passing my time in lockdown, passing my boredom by making content to put on the wibbly wobbly web for people to listen to. So until next time, everybody stay safe Keep being careful and don't forget, keep washing those hands. Speak to you very soon.